time there was a town by the sea, and in this town of Tidius, Melibus, and their two daughters, Galatia and Philida. There they are. And like most towns, a bunch of other people not worth mentioning. Yeah, there they are. Now it was for a long time in this town that they had to give the prettiest and most well-behaved girl to the fearsome, terrifying sea monster. Oh yeah, and under a tree. Now, Galathea and Philida's dads thought their daughters were the most beautiful and good girls in the whole town. And since their daddies loved them so much, they dressed them up like boys and hid them in the forest. Thus, they would not be sacrificed to the sea monster. Needless to say, Galathea and Philida were not too happy to have to look and act like stinky, disgusting boys. Well, it happened that they met in the forest and had no idea that either of them were girls. Needless to say, there was an uncomfortable silence as neither of them knew how to act or talk like stupid, disgusting boys. Luckily, the goddess Diana happened to be hunting in the area that particular day and decided to take the girls, I mean boys, hunting with her. The girls, I mean boys, were happy to go because they had already fallen in love with each other, thinking naturally that they were each real boys. And, you know, being in love, they wanted to spend as much time together as they could. Meanwhile, Cupid, dressed like a girl, of course, decides to play a bunch of tricks on Diana's nymphs by making them fall in love with the two girls. I, yes, I mean boys. Now, it turns out that Jipping the sea god of his monster sacrifice made him a little upset, and so he vows revenge. Like all good sea gods, he goes for a walk in the forest to think of the best way to wipe out a town of people not worth mentioning. So we come back to the forest where Galathea and Philida, both in love with each other, complain about how unfair it is that they can't have each other. But aha, Cupid has made good on his promise and made all Dinah's nymphs fall in love with the boys. I mean, girls. Galathea and Felita. Needless to say, the nymphs are not at all happy to be in love with stupid, stinky boys, and since they can't fight it, they decide to just accept it. Okay, so Galathea and Felita have found time to chat about a subject that would scare the pants off most guys, that your buddy saying he wishes you were a girl so he could marry you. Hey, kids, it's happened before, but since they've already said that they loved each other, who's counting? Well, Diana is, and she's pretty upset that her nymphs are all in love. Anyway, Diana figures out pretty fast, being a goddess, that there's some skullduggery going on here. Long story short, she knows Cupid is up to no good and finds sends out her nymphs, so get him back and give him a heck of a time out. The nymphs are fast and Cupid's stupid because he's caught in about two seconds. Diana makes Cupid undo all the love knots he's made between the nymphs and the boys, which are really girls. Meanwhile, back in town, all those people not worth mentioning are a little upset that Galathea and Fido's dads don't have their daughters to divvy up to the fearsome sea monster. There's a little lion, a touch of fibbing, but in the end they get to the next cutest thing in town for the sea monster, poor Hebe. The not-too-beautiful bumpkin It's pretty well agreed that Hebe's not going to cut it, so she sent it home in shame. Probably not too little therapy for the emotional trauma having the whole town tell her she sucked. Poor Cupid all this time has been forced to continue on doing all the love matches non-stop. Poor Cupid is so tired he wants to fall asleep. The nymphs give him a good backhand and keep him at it. So finally, Neptune, the sea god, finally makes up his mind to destroy the town real good for trying to pull the wool over his eyes. But he feels bad for it, so it's not too bad. Back to Galthy and Felita, the subject of exactly why they don't want to go to the sacrifice comes up. And after some rather shameless flattery, Galthea tells a tall tale that had, she had had a dream that if she went, she'd be turned to a girl and sacrificed a sea monster. Apparently, Felita is brighter than Galthea gives her credit for. The lie is so unbelievable that Felita puts two and two together, and what is if Galthea is a girl like her? This ain't good because girls can't like girls like that. Galthea and Felita caught a glimpse of poor Heavy and agree that she ain't fair enough either. He's on his coffee break, so I'm here now. So it turns out Neptune knows darn well that Galathea and Felita are in drag and is going to punish Diana and her nymphs for hiding them. Moreover, he'll kill every good and beautiful girl till everyone will want to look like him. Diana happens to come across this, because as far as she knows, she's done nothing wrong. Alright, so Venus and Cupid's mom come down and ate too pleased their kids have been slapped around. Neptune's a little puzzled why all these gods have to be at one place at one time and still ask Diana if she's got Cupid. Well, Neptune, either from boredom or tediousness, makes a deal that he'll stop giving good girls to sea monsters if Diana lets Cupid go to spread love again. All agree, and everything is hunky-dory. Until Galathea and Philida find out it's okay to be good girls again, sadly, though in love, can't marry each other because they're both girls. So the gods decide, the nice gods that they are, to give the ability to one to be turned into a boy permanently. After a bit of debate of who will be a boy or a girl, they'll just have to find out at the wedding. Oh yeah, while this has been about a bunch of guys have been trying a bunch of get-rich schemes to no avail, like cheating at cards and making gold from nothing and fortune-telling. Anyway, they get jobs as wedding singers at the wedding, so they all live happily ever after. The end.